Are you all right? You kind of Not really. Got out to finish I'll be honest. Well, Napoli won Barcelona 1, then is how it finished. Uh, for more on this, we welcome in oh, a couple of Frenchmen. Frank Leboeuf and Julien Laurent uh, join us. Uh, let's, it's so bad, I was mumbling to myself. Oh, there we heard you. About, Look yourself, we can hear you mumbling. About, I was, Jules, I was thinking, it was, well, that's a point share. Then I'm just, I've just <laughs> lost track. It, it, today's Champions League games... <laughs> Off the back, eh? what was yesterday? Uh, yesterday was Dortmund, uh, PSV. Oh my God, it? what a week, so... what a week. I'm just a week late and taking my holiday. Yeah. I should have taken two weeks, <laughs> should have taken it now. Ah, right. I mean, I suppose <laughs> that, that game were kind of, that was the main focus we had on. Yes. And the middle screen and all our, yep. our tellies. Because we thought, right, you know, two teams struggling. Now playing ninth. Bassa, we know, having, as we cover La Liga every week, have really been struggling, particularly defensively. You thought, right, Napoli can get at them. This is going to be quite an exciting game, and particularly because Barcelona don't defend particularly well. But although Barcelona controlled the bulk of it, particularly in the first half, it was hard, man. It's just hard to watch these teams. I mean, this is a, this is a Napoli side. Yeah, they've had all these changes, and uh, they lost Kim to, to Bayern Munich. They've changed, obviously changed manager, but they won the league last year. Yeah. They were one of the best teams in Europe to watch, and Barcelona the same. They won the league. They were playing exciting football. How the mighty have fallen here, it was just, just really, I, I thought personally, quite a poor game. Yeah, Frank, it was quite a good example as to why both these teams are struggling domestically this season. Yes, yeah, for sure, for sure. And I was Craig with that, you know. I was uh, really bored in front of the TV. I was watching at the same time Porto Arsenal, and we talk about it after. But, yeah, <laughs> it's not, it wasn't the Champions League game. And, and, and I'm with Craig, you know, what happened to uh, Napoli uh, since last season? And that team was offensive, offensively very good, direct and uh, uh, full of imagination. We saw almost nothing, nothing from them. Uh, it was a little bit better for, for Barca. Uh, but at the end of the day, yeah, you watch that and say, you, you, you wait for Tuesdays and Wednesday of Champions League to have top games in Europe and maybe in the world. And you see that. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's the first of La Liga last, last year, first of uh, the Calcio last, last season, and you see that. It's appalling. Really, it's appalling. I don't know if it, the, because of what, because of whom, but really, it's not what we expect. Overall, Jules, so Barca will take the draw back to Catalonia in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think they'll be kind of happy with that, really, to be honest. I mean, I think the fact that Napoli had zero shot not just on target, just zero shot in the first half at home in a Champions League match, I, I think sums up very well what we saw today in this game. It was, it was just not good. I guess Barcelona would be disappointed by the way they defended on that goal. Inigo Martinez on Ozyman, whether I think Frank thinks there's a foul from Ozyman on Inigo. But he should not dive in, like Craig said, and probably that defensive line should be a bit higher up. Anyway, at least on the edge of the box, not, not Inigo Martinez inside his own box. But apart from that, there was just not much, certainly not enough in a game of two clubs of this calibre. I think if you're Barcelona, though, and you, you touched on it there, the way they've been playing, it's not a bad job, really. I mean, we've, we've watched them a lot, and they've been poor. But a lot of people won't watch necessarily watch the Liga uh, and think, well, it's Barcelona, but, you know, what, what's going on? They've been awful, right? They've been pretty awful. And uh, defensively, we've been all over the place. Xavi is leaving at the end of the season. There's been rumblings with experienced players. Uh, and I think they they get on the plane and go back to Spain and go, do you know what? We'll take that. Because whenever Xavi puts a team on the field this season, I think he has the jitters about, oh, my God, this could be three or four. I mean, Granada scored three against him. Villarreal scored five against him. We talked about this yesterday. At the Montjuic, at home, they have been cannon fodder for almost everybody in terms of giving chances up. And so... I think he, at the moment, walks out of almost every ground, Dan, if he's kept it quite tight and they're in the game and they've got a positive result and goes, well, that's a bonus because the press are not going to nail me tomorrow. Yeah. And that's kind of how it feels with him and his team is that they're always one disaster away from, ultimately, uh, John, John Laporta replacing them before the end of the season. And that might happen if Napoli go to... To the Monja we can win, which on tonight's evidence seems very unlikely. What percentage Bam. chance then of these two teams of go going through? 
Uh, well, I think I would go for Barcelona. I mean, they, they yeah. showed during the first half, even if it was poor, that they're much better than Napoli. And we, we saw almost nothing from, from Napoli except that goal. And maybe they pushed a little bit at the end of the first half for five minutes and uh, at the end of the game. But uh, I, see, I see Barca much stronger and uh, I really think that they're going to finish the job. What's percentage, Frank? <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, sorry much. Eighty twenty. Wow! Oh. <laughs> That's so annoying. Uh, Joe, I go sixty forty Barca. It's just you don't know what to expect of either of those two teams. They're capable yeah. of much better than what we saw tonight. They also, they also can produce another game like tonight. I do think, Frank, that Barca is slightly better. But at least the only thing we can say is that the new Napoli manager, Calzona, will have three more weeks to work with that team. He's only had one training session before tonight's game. So that's not ideal. So at least maybe he will have a bit more time to put his input into this squad and this, in this team. And then we might see a better Napoli. But I, I still would go for Barca. I'm going to 60 40 Barca, but hedging more even to 55 45. I think it's close. And I'll tell you why. They have been no. They've, been, they've, not, they've not looked any more solid bass at home than they have away from home. And I tell you, if you, you have to question, will, will Napoli be as bad in the second leg? Maybe they will be. But if they score first and punch this Barca team in the nose, we've seen it, they'll crumble. Yeah. They'll absolutely crumble. So I think it's still Barca's, but it is very close.